I'm coming down. I've been weeding beds t today and getting some more of the garden stuff, replanting some of the stuff that hasn't taken. Um, this is my uh, pumpkin patch. It's right next to the road. Uh, the building that we're here right now, right next to, this is where we're cleaning it up slowly and that's going to be our shop for selling some of our stuff. And then we, I have the pumpkin patch right out back. And um, anyway, uh, people will be able to come out. It'll be a you pick your own and they'll go out and they can pick their pumpkins and whatever. And I'm over here. This is a our uh, asparagus batch, patch. We planted it much earlier and uh, um, actually we planted a, like four of them last year and then we planted another ten this year. So um, that's our asparagus patch and so I got to get in here and get this weed in and get some compost over it. But I wanted to show you this because I've been collecting this as I've been weeding the gardens. I've been collecting this weed all day. And that is this little weed here with the pretty yellow flowers. Get my head shadow out of the way. And this is wood sorrel. And wood sorrel has, if you look here, it's got um, kind of, uh, you can see the, the little heart-shaped leaves. And it kind of looks like a little clover. This is an actual clover right here. Uh, and you can see the actual clover doesn't have that heart shape to the leaf. doesn't have that little dip in the top. Well, here the wood sorrel does. Now, wood sorrel, when it gets dry and hot, or when it gets really hot, the hot part of the day, these leaves literally fold up. And if you look over here, these ones here are starting to fold up because they're so hot, they're starting to fold up. Now, wood sorrel is a wood weed. It's going to grow in your garden. You're going to see a lot of it. Most places on the North American continent, at least, it grows. Um, and little kids know wood sorrel uh, really easily because you'll see every now and then little kids take a few of the leaves and pop them in their mouth. And wood sorrel is an excellent thirst quencher, even using it that way, just to take a few of the leaves and chew them. They have a, a tart to them, a tart flavor, and they make your mouth water, which helps uh, make you feel less thirsty when you have liquid in your mouth. The sensation of water in your mouth, even if it's your own saliva can make you feel less thirsty and a lot of people used to do that you know if they were walking and they were really thirsty they would put a stone in their mouth because that stimulates the saliva in the mouth and the same wood sorrel is it just naturally does that now some people say that wood sorrel has some problems with it if you eat too much of it it can make you not absorb vitamin B very well well you'd have to eat a lot of it and I don't think anybody ever does munch away it's not that big of a deal um, but anyway, this is wood sorrel. Uh, I'm going to, I've been gathering it all day. I got a couple cups of it. I'm going to gather the last of it here. I'm going to kind of weed this bed out and get this bed weeded. And I'm going to take this in because the day is getting hot here in Wisconsin. It's coming up. To, it's going to be in the mid 80s today. And I know for many of you guys, that's probably not that hot. But for me, <laughs> mid 80s in May is way too hot. It looks like it's going to be a hot summer this year. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and make myself a drink with this. It's an excellent drink. Just making it as a sun tea and putting ice on it is just an excellent drink. But we're going to add just a couple extra ingredients and uh, make one of my favorite uh, um, hot weather drinks. But wood sorrel, got that pretty little yellow flower. But the main thing, because the flowers come later and these little leaves will come out even in the middle of uh, spring, early spring. Now oh, my fingernails look like I've been look like I've been weeding. <laughs> um, is those little three heart-shaped leaves that come together almost clover-like. Like I said, I've gathered up some. I'm going to gather up this little bit and I'll take you in the house in just a few minutes and make you up and show you how to make a, a nice little tea drink okay, out of this. Okay, so you clean out all your um, your stuff make sure that you don't have any shape and then what we're going to do is we're going to make a tea now if you're a smart person and you actually I, I mean I'm actually a meteorologist and I still didn't I still wasn't thinking this morning but you watched the weather this morning and you knew it was going to be hot you could have started this in this morning as a sun tea but since I did not I'm going to start it as a regular tea and you're going to want to use just about the same amount of boiling water t as plant material. Don't be all spastic and measure it out exactly. But, you know, a couple cups of water to a couple cups of, of uh, oops, you guys get all steamed. A couple cups of water to a couple cups of wood sorrel or three cups to, you know, on that order. And then we're just going to let this get leached out. And it leaches out pretty quickly. And you can see just how much that boiling water just gets right in there and
starts taking and you can already smell it. It smells good. And then I add a little bit of honey to it because I like my, you know, I want mine a little bit more sweet. And so I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. I'm going to just add, I don't know, this is a couple cups of water. I might add a tablespoon or two of honey into it. And uh, while it's hot, and then I'll strain out this plant material in a little bit and I'm going to let it cool down in the refrigerator um, over here. So anyway, I'm going to put a little honey into this and Sorry. I'll be right so back. So it took a cup, two hands to get the honey open so I had to put you guys down for a little bit. And, and I don't really measure, I just kind of put it in. And I want to put the honey in to the, while the water's hot because then obviously it incorporates itself easier into the hot water. I don't know, that's around a tablespoon or so. And uh, anyway, so I will um, let this set, and then I'm going to strain off the plant well, material. Well, you know what, I didn't hit the uh, record button while I was straining out my herbs. But here, you can just see, here's the herbs that have been strained out. Um, just basically poured the liquid through, got through a sieve, got the herbs. If you want to make sure you get everything out, put a little cloth in there. Uh, I usually put it back into the original container, so then I strain it a second time, and then I catch everything. So anyway, I got that. Now what I usually do is put it in the refrigerator and let it cool down a little bit, but I'm really thirsty so I'm actually going to put it in the freezer and let it turn and cool down for just a little bit. And then uh, I'll show you from there on, but I'm just going to stick it down into the freezer and uh, take this and of course this goes out to the compost pile just because I want this cool down really fast. <laughs> but it's very, um, you don't get, it. there's the tart flavor to it. But it really it just has a really excellent, I don't even know how to describe it. It tastes like tea with lemon in it. Um, tea with something tart in it. It's very, very, very good, very refreshing. And it's already cooling down uh, pretty fast. I let it seep for uh, probably about, I don't know, 10 minutes. And so it doesn't have much. I'd say 15 minutes in the freezer and this will be fine. Then we got one more ingredient and... We'll be okay, here we are 15 minutes later, and this, I, I should just put this out, this is perfectly wonderful, a, a great refreshing drink to drink all on its own, and, and a lot of times I do just make sorrel tea to drink on my own, but I like the little addition of orange juice, so I put in about half as much orange juice, so, you know, if you got, and again, this is a, an about, um, if you got a couple cups of, of, uh, your tea, then, you know, a cup of orange juice. And again, don't go crazy measuring this out so that it's perfect. Add it to your taste. Put a little bit of orange juice in there, see if you'd like it. And if you do, you know, add a little more or whatever, however you want to do it. But uh, I put, again, about half as much orange juice. And then I'm going to get myself a glass. Back yeah, and there we go. Now you can double this recipe, triple this recipe, however. I, I always just use however much uh, wood sorrow I get. And, again, add about that same amount of water. And uh, then add about and a couple t tablespoons of uh, honey. And then about half, again, all of that. Uh, for orange juice, and that's one of my favorite hot weather drinks. A little garnish of a uh, uh, lemon, and if you get enough of it and you serve it to guests, they're going to be wanting to know what it is because it has a very unique flavor to it, and it's very thirst quenching. Um, sometimes it seems like you can drink and drink and drink and never get over that um, thirst. Well. That's one thing about sorrel, sheep sorrel, wood sorrel, any of that, is that that sour bite to it helps quench your thirst. Anyway, this is one of my favorite glasses, beer proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. Benjamin Franklin had a lot of really cool quotes. But I'm going to go out and sit on the north side, because it's a little hot to be sitting on the south side, and listen to the birds sing in the woods. So, uh, see you later.